Okay. Financial reporting. We started consolidation in previous lecture. Consolidation is where one company acquire an other company or more than other companies, more than one companies by 51% or more. So the investee company will be called subsidiary and investor company will be called parent company. And in that case, if you are having a control as well, you need to prepare consolidative financial statements being a parent company. And in consolidation, we need to calculate uh, first what is the holding percentage. Then we need to calculate net assets of subsidiary at acquisition date, at reporting date, and what is the difference in reserve. We need to calculate non-controlling interest. We need to calculate groups retain earning. And non-controlling interest can be calculated using two methods, fair value method or proportionate of net assets method. And if we are calculating using fair value method, in that case, impairment of goodwill will be charged to non-controlling interest and groups retained on it. And we covered some question yesterday. So let's move towards discussing some more concept left. And then we'll discuss a good question, long question. Unrealized profit we discussed due to intergroup transactions. If there is any profit part included in that transaction, so that profit is unrealized. That we need to eliminate at consolidation. If there is any purchase sale of inventory based on selling price, that is including profit. So we need to see how much inventory is unsold at the year end. From that unsold inventory, we need to eliminate the unrealized profit part. In case of any intergroup receivables, payables, we need to eliminate those. If subsidiary company obtains some loan from parent company, subsidiary recorded it as a non current liability, parent recorded it as investment, we need to eliminate this while preparing consolidated financial statement. In that group, there could be buying a selling of non contact And if in the group, parent company is selling some asset to subsidiary, or uh, subsidiary selling some asset to parent company, and we suppose carrying value is a different, sale price is different, they are generating any gain or loss on this disposal. So that gain or loss we need to eliminate. That is also unrealized gain loss. And due to different amount, I suppose the asset carrying value was 100. And it was a sold within the group for 150. First, there is unrealized profit of 50. That we need to eliminate. The second thing, the asset carrying value was 100. If there was no sale purchase transaction within the group, this asset depreciation 
could have been charged on the 100. But now as it is sold within the group 150, mean other entity recorded it on 150 and they are charging depreciation on 150. This means they are charging more depreciation. How much that more depreciation has been charged, we need to eliminate that depreciation as well. In case of any buying selling of asset between the group, if there is any profit part that we need to eliminate, and we need to see is there any change in a depreciation that we need to adjust? How? Let's discuss. So, suppose parent company sold asset to subsidiary. So, we need to see what's the carrying amount at the date of transfer. And we need to see what is the charge of depreciation on that. Suppose they transfer on 150. And using 10 years life, they are charging depreciation of 15. This means now it is 135 on carrying value within the group. Suppose its original carrying value was 100. And based on original carrying value 10 years life, the depreciation could be 10 instead of 15. So this extra depreciation, what they have charged, five. That we need to adjust. Where, in which book that depreciation extra charged. And on this, if they made this profit, that we need to eliminate. Let's discuss our example. We acquired 80% of S a number of years ago. So P is parent company, S is subsidiary, and holding is 80%. P transferred an item of plant to subsidiary for 60,000 for 6, on 1st January 20X1. Year end is 31st December. At start of the year, parent company transferred an asset to subsidiary, means sold an asset to subsidiary for 6,000. The plant original cost P 10,000 and had an original useful life of five years. When purchased three years ago, P bought this asset for 10,000 three years ago and its useful life was five years. This means 10,000 was cost. Useful life was five years. How much depreciation per year? 2,000. And they have used three years. This means three year depreciation has been charged. What is three year depreciation? 6,000. This means carrying value of plot is, uh, uh, that asset is what? 4,000. But you sold on 6,000. This means there is a profit part of 2000. Is that? Okay. Three years ago, the use of life of the asset has not changed as a result of this transfer. What is the unrealized profit on transaction and how should this be treated within the financial statement? So we need to perform calculation with the transfer. And without transfer, I mean with the sale, without sale, what could be the amounts? So, if we see without a sale, cost ten thousand, three year depreciation charge six thousand, carrying value is about four thousand, and for the current year depreciation will be two thousand. I mean at the year end carrying value will be two thousand. Now, if we see with the transfer, 
the carrying amount is 6000 because subsidiary bought on 6000 so they will record on 6000 at start of the year when they transfer at start of the year they will charge depreciation of this year based on 6000 useful life remain unchanged mean if useful life is 5 years 3 years already used so how much is remaining useful life 2 years so they will depreciate on two years. Means subsidiary has charged depreciation of three thousand. With the transfer is number one. Without transfer is number two, and difference is one minus two. Or you can say this is A, this is B, and this is A minus B. So the difference in carrying amount at start of the year at the date of acquisition that is 2000. In depreciation, what's the difference? A minus B, that is 1000 extra depreciation charged. And at year end, in carrying value, what's the difference is coming 1000 extra. How we should adjust this? This means this profit part is included into the group. So we need to eliminate this from retained earning. 2000, we need to eliminate from retained earning. Retained earning is a equity. How we can eliminate by debiting the retained earning? So we will debit consolidated retained earning with 2000. And the asset is also overstated by 1000. That we need to reduce. Because asset without transfer, its value is 2000. While due to this transfer, the asset in the consolidated financial statement coming at 3000. Because we need to add subsidiary and parent company assets. This means in group. Asset is overstated by 1000. So we need to adjust this to 1000. How? By crediting the asset. Property plan and equipment. Who charge more the appreciation? Parent company or subsidiary? Subsidiary. By how much? 1000. This means they calculated their profit by charging more depreciation. So we need to add to their retained earning how much 1000 by creating subsidiary retainer. I mean, we need to prepare two columns. One with the transfer. And one if the sale not happened mean without a transfer. And we need to see whether there is any profit part that we need to eliminate from consolidation from where from consolidated retained earning by debiting it whether asset is overvalued or not if it is overvalued we need to credit the asset with that amount and we need to see whether there is any extra or less depreciation charge and where it is charged from that company retained earning, we need to adjust that extra depreciation. Can you understand this? What's the counting entry? In case of parent company sold asset to subsidiary on profit. So consolidated retained earning debt with underlies profit figure. Asset credit and subsidiary retained earning credit because extra depreciation charge in subsidiary work. If subsidiary sold the plant to parent company, who recorded the profit, subsidiary or parent? If subsidiary sold asset to parent company, in whose book, Profit is recorded on sale. I'm sorry. Subsidiary. This means 
this archaeological profit is in subsidiary books, so we need to debit subsidiary retained earning. And asset is overstated, we need to reduce by 1000. And that extra taxation charge, we will add to retained earning. Because this was deducted while calculating the profit, and due to this, profit was lower. So we need to add to the profit. Profit means retained earning because profit, where it's gone, through retained earning. So we'll increase retained earning by crediting it. Can you understand this? Let's move forward. If there is acquisition of subsidiary during the year, year started from 1st January 2023 and ending on 31st December 2023. Subsidiary was acquired on 1st April. We need to consolidate subsidiary reserves with parent company. But normally at reporting date, the subsidiary reserves that are available in trial balance or balance sheet, they are for the complete year. So while adding assets, liabilities with each other, we need to proportionate the subsidiary assets, liabilities according to number of months. I mean, we add non-current assets, we add current assets, but now first we need to proportion non-current asset, current assets figures by 9 by 12, and then we will consolidate. This is called mid-year acquisition. In working one, we calculate what is the Profit retained earning or subsidiary that we charge to parent retained earning and non controlling interest retained earning. If that profit is for the complete year, we need to multiply by month first, and then you should charge it toward non controlling interest and parent company retained earning. Because this profit is for complete year, you acquired after three months of the year. So three months profit, you cannot consolidate. You need to consolidate nine months profit. And in case of mid-year acquisition, while consolidating reserves of subsidiary, we need to apportion according to number of month of post acquis I mean, only post acquis reserves we need to consolidate. pre acquis reserves, we should not consolidate. Let's move towards a good question. Test your understanding seven. In this question, almost all concepts will be applied. So consolidated financial statement, statement of financial position, what you need to do, you need to prepare consolidated financial statement of financial position as at 30th number 20x7. On 1st May 20X7, Carl bought 60% of Susan KS, subsidiary as parent K, 60% holding, paying 76,000 cash. The summarized statement of financial position for the two entities at 30th November 20X7 is as follows property, plant, and equipment. Investment. They bought for 76,000. Why investment is 98,000? They bought for 70, they paid cash 76,000. Why investment is 98,000? Might be there is some share option, might be there is some contingent consideration included. I mean, they paid cash 76,000. Mm -hmm. But total consideration paid in their investment is 98,000. So there could be contingent consideration. There could be share option as well. 
फ्रंट एसेट्स इन्वेंट्री रिसीवेबल्स कैश शेयर कैपिटल ऑफ बोथ कंपनीज रिटेन अर्निंग ऑफ बोथ कंपनी दैट इज ऑन रिपोर्टिंग डेट नॉन करंट लाइबिलिटीज एट परसेंट लोन नोट इन सब्सिडरी करंट लाइबिलिटीज फॉर बोथ कंपनीज एंड वी आर हैविंग सम अदर इंफॉर्मेशन द फॉलोइंग इंफॉर्मेशन इज रेल द इन्वेंट्री ऑफ कार इन पेरेंट इंक्लूड एट थाउजेंड ऑफ गुड्स परचेज फॉर कैश फ्रॉम सुसन एट ए कॉस्ट प्लस ट्वेंटी वन परसेंट mean k bought goods from s mean parent bought goods from subsidiary of 8000 at cost plus 25% what is the unrealized profit part that we need to consolidate that we need to eliminate at consolidation good luck everybody What is the unrealized profit part? How? Oh. Ah. Cost plus profit is equal to same. Cost is a hundred. Profit is twenty five. This means sale is one twenty five, and we are having sale figure. We want to move towards profit. So what we will do? Eight thousand itself is one twenty-five. We want to move twenty-five. So sixteen hundred is the unrealized profit. So for this, we need to record accounting entry. What? Where this profit is in parent company or subsidiary company? Subsidiary. subsidiary. So subsidiary retain earning debit, inventory credit, because it is included in the inventory. Mm -hmm. Subsidiary retain earning debit and inventory credit. Okay. On first June twenty X seven, Carl transferred an item of plant to Susan for fifteen thousand. For fifteen thousand, they transfer. A plant to subsidiary parent transfer to subsidiary. Its carrying amount at that date was ten thousand, and its remaining useful life was five year. Good luck, everybody. Can you see what is unrealized profit? By how much assets should be reduced? By how much extra taxation we should? Reduce from subsidiary retain earnings. Mean for number one, we need to pass accounting entry debit subsidiary retain earning with the sixteen hundred and credit inventory with the sixteen hundred. For number two, if we see with the transfer and without transfer, mm -hmm. so we can call it working. Uh, One. Now we are moving towards working to transfer of assets.
So with the transfer, without transfer, and a difference. So carrying amount was 10,000. They sold 15,000. So with the transfer, it's coming with 15,000. Without transfer, it's coming with 10,000. How much depreciation is charged? Remaining useful life is what? Five years. So 15,000 divided by five years. Three. When they transferred. First June. What's the year end? 30th November. 30th November. How many months? Six. Six months. So what is six months depreciation? 1500? Um, on 15,000, on 15, it's 1,500. While without transfer, if we see 1,000. 1, the difference is 500 more depreciation charged. And there is gain of 5,000 recorded. And asset carrying value is up by how much? Asset carrying value is up by how much? This is 13,500. And this is 9,000. So asset carrying value is up by how much? 45. This means we need to record accounting entry, debit, consolidated retained earnings by 5,000 unrealized profit. That is in parent company, not in subsidiary, in parent company. We need to credit asset in property, plant, and equipment. Asset name was property, plant, and equipment by how much? 45. The asset carrying amount is up by 45. Where depreciation 500 extra charged in parent company book or subsidiary books? Who bought? Who bought subsidiary? Subsidiary recorded on 15,000. They charge extra depreciation in their book. How much? 500. This means we need to add this to retain earning of subsidiary. So credit. Subsidiary retained earnings. How much? Can you understand this? What will be the effect of these? This will be added to closing retained earning of subsidiary. And this will be deducted from inventory in consolidation I mean by adding both in we will deduct 1600 and this 1600 should be deducted from subsidiary closing retained earning what is subsidiary closing retained earning 69000 debit mean we should deduct and then this 5000 should be charged to consolidated retained earning that we calculate through working this should be reduced from property plant and equipment. When we add both parent subsidiary property plant and equipment, we will deduct 4,500. And this 500 should be added to this 69,000 subsidiary closing retainer. Can you understand the fact of these two transactions? Is that? Let's move forward. Call company values the non controlling interest using the fair value method. And if there is any impairment, that should also be deducted from 
non-controlling interest calculation and retained earning calculation. At the date of acquisition, the fair value of a 40% non-controlling interest was 50,000 and it is normally given in the question. This we need to use while calculating goodwill figure. An impairment loss of 1000 is to be charged against goodwill. Impairment is 1000. That we need to deduct from goodwill. And 60% of this will be deducted from retained earning calculation, 40% from non controlling interest calculations. Because company is using fair value method. Susan earned profit 9,000 in the year subsidiary. Year end profit is what? 9,000. When you bought the subsidiary? First, first May. Your year end is what? Yes. 30th November. How many months? May it is? How many months? Mm -hmm. Seven. Mean we need to consolidate seven months of this profit. Okay, let's see. The loan note in Susan book represent monies borrowed from Carl on 30th November. Mean this loan note is money borrowed from parent company. This means this. Investment also include this 20,000. This 20,000, they have recorded as loan. Parent company provided loan, so they have recorded as investment. This means 90,000, this 20,000 included that we need to eliminate. It shouldn't be recorded as loan, even as investment. Even we don't record parent company investment. But if we see 98,000. 20,000 is this, 76,000 is this, 2,000 still difference. Let's see if there is any other information. Otherwise, that could be other investment. That should be recorded. Let's see. Included in car receivable 4,000 relating to inventory sold to Susan during the year. In, in parent financial statements, 4,000 they recorded receivable from subsidiary that we need to eliminate. This means in subsidiary, there will be 4,000 pay, uh, payable that we need to eliminate. Susan raised a check of 2500 and sent it to Carl on 29th of November 20X7. Carl didn't receive the check until 4th of December 20X7. I mean, there was a 4000 receivables payable recorded. And before year end subsidiary, sent a check of 2500 to parent but parent didn't receive that check by year end this mean 2500 paid this is cash in transit so moving from this pocket to this pocket obviously if on the way, it will automatically come in this pocket. So that is almost paid. Mm -hmm. How much remaining left? 1500. Mm -hmm. With 1500, we need to reduce receivable and pay. With 1500, we need to reduce receivable as well as pay. So now we are moving towards our main calculation working that we perform normally. So first working, working well, that is holding. 
how much is holding of parent in subsidiary 60%. So P acquire subsidiary 60% on 1st May. And year end is 30th November. This means seven months. The second working, we perform to calculate net assets at the time of acquisition, at the time of reporting, and we calculate difference of subsidiary only. If we see subsidiary results, there is a share capital. There is a share capital given. There is share capital given and retained earnings given. And share capital we assume remains same. This is reporting data data, not acquisition date. This is reporting data data, mean year and date data. So reporting date, share capital is 40,000 and retained earning is 69,000. So share capital is 40,000 and Retained earning is 69,000 and we assume share capital, share premium, they remain same. What is the retained earning at acquisition date? Normally they provide information in notes. And they provided information. Susan earned a profit of 9,000 in the year to and it to 30th number 20x7. I mean, during the year, the profit is 9,000 for the complete year. This means if profit is 9,000 and we suppose acquired the subsidy at start of the year, so acquisition retained earning will be 60,000. Mm -hmm. 60,000 plus 9,000 will become 69,000. But as this 9,000 is for complete year. So we need to calculate how much is relating to post equity profit and how much is pre equity profit. So 9,000 is the profit we acquired on first May, so seven months. Mm -hmm. So this means from this, seven by 12 is a post acqui, and five by 12 is pre acqui, and we don't need to do anything with pre acqui. What is the post acqui profit figure? Five to five, six. And if we add, uh, oh, sorry, subtract the 5 to 5 zero from this, we can uh, arrive at retained earning at acquisition date. 37 points. No. 63 cents. 63 By adding in this 5 to 5 zero at reporting date, it becomes 69,000. We had an adjustment rate. That is relating to during the year. That doesn't affect this. That is we are making at year end. Adjustments mean at year end we need to adjust some things that have not been adjusted yet. I mean, what was subsidiary profit when we acquired it? That is 63750. We but we don't need to do anything with that. That is before acquisition. That was before acquisition. We are concerned with how much subsidy generated after we acquire. 
because from that we need to add to our consolidated retained earning and we need to add with the non controlling interest part before acquisition it's none of our concern can you understand this now we need to make some adjustment with the 69000 and we pass two entries here Subsidiary retained earning should be debit with 1600 unrealized profit that we need to adjust here. So unrealized profit that is 1600 debit. This means we should eliminate from it. 1600 negative. And we credited subsidiary retained earning here with the 500. That should be added or subtracted. Added. What's the name of this? What is that? Extra depreciation, excess depreciation charge. Excess depreciation charge. That is. Five now we need to calculate these figures. What is the value of net taxes acquired? That is one zero three seven five zero. Is that? And what is uh, reporting date instead of calculating reporting date just calculate the difference what is the difference value Four to five, uh, five to five zero minus 1600 plus 500 4150 four, four, one, five, this 4150 we need to distribute between parent and Non controlling interest means 60% and 40%. Can you calculate 60% and 40%? What is 60%? Sorry? 2490. 2490 and what is 40%? 1660. 1660. These figures will be added to non controlling interest calculation and retained earning calculation. Can you understand this? This was the easiest working. In this question, it become difficult because subsidiary retain earning and acquisition date was not given, and subsidiary acquired during the year. They provided information. A complete profit for the year is 9,000. But we acquired not at start of the year, we acquired during the year. So how much is profit generated after acquisition? Okay, working three, goodwill calculation. Goodwill calculation. What's the formula? Consideration paid? Yeah. There is no other consideration except that 76,000. Add fair value of non controlling interest that is given in the question. How much? 50,000? We need to deduct what fair value of net assets acquired. That is what we have calculated this one zero three seven five zero. 
So we calculated goodwill as triple two five zero, and we need to deduct impairment. Yes, how much was impairment? Ten thousand, I think so. How much? How much? One thousand. Yes. So one thousand impairment if we deduct. Can we So Oh yeah. No, that is other investment, not in this company. That we will record as investment in consolidation as well. But didn't you say it was like? We could have bought this company with some uh, share of them. There is a 98,000. Out of this 98,000, 76,000 consideration paid for subsidy. 20,000 is a paid loan. So remaining 2,000, we will still record investment. We will record goodwill. We will record investment 2,000. That is other investment of parent company. Where it is, there is no information, but we will record this other investment. If there is any subsidy, we will add with that. So by deducting this, we arrive at 21250 amount of goodwill. What's the next working? Okay. Working for non controlling interest. So, fair value of non controlling interest that is given 50,000. Yes. And we are having a subsidiary share. How much? 1660. Yes. So, share of S 1660 mm -hmm. less we need to deduct impairment. Mm -hmm. Impairment is 1000. What is 40 percent? Okay. What is not controlling interest? That will be recorded under equity. Next, we need to calculate groups retain earning. Fifty thousand plus one six six zero minus four hundred. Fifty one to sixty. Fifty one to sixty. Yeah. So groups retained earning, we need to calculate how we can calculate parent retained earning. That is given in the question. How much is that? That is 189,000. Plus subsidiary share. That is what? 2490. Minus impairment. That is what? 600. We need to make one more adjustment for this. Five thousand we need to deduct. That is relating to what? Asset transfer. Transfer of asset. Unrealized profit. So minus unrealized profit. That is what? 5,000. If we deduct, we can calculate the figure. 185890. Eight, So now we can move towards solving our question.
Just one second, can you show the working group? Goodwill, NCI, and Kirti Academy. I'm sorry, if you uh, jumble the working, it will be one half of life. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. You don't need to reduce to the next working. How would you do it in the wrong order? No. No, she's asking if you can do the work in a different order, right? Yeah, you can perform a group with retained earning first, then you can calculate NCI, no issue with that. But you would have to use the... Exactly. Because this working should be before, then this, after this, you will be able to calculate other things. Okay, so let's move towards consolidation. So property, plant, and equipment. Property, plant, and equipment. 138 plus 115. And we corrected property, plant, and equipment here with 4,500. So that we need to deduct. And minus 4,500. So that will be... 1490. 138,000 plus 115,000 minus 4500. 1490. 1490. Please calculate again Ragi, please give me the figure. 248, 500. Yeah. Investment. How much left? 9,800 was there. We deducted 7,600 for subsidiary and 20,000 for loan that we need to eliminate. So remaining investment is what? 2,000. What else? Twenty one two fifty. Yes. Is that? Yes. Inventory, we need to add, but we created inventory somewhere mm -hmm. with 1600. Mm -hmm. That is what unrealized profit. Credit me, inventory should be reduced. Mm -hmm. So 1600, we need to deduct from it. How much is the value? Three zero four one two. Three zero four zero. Four hundred. Three zero four hundred. Okay, receivable. We need to add both these. Now, if we move towards last. Yes. Uh, we have to use. There was a four thousand receivable payable. But out of these 2,500 paid, that is cash in transit. So remaining 1,500. Mm -hmm. For remaining 1,500, we will record accounting entry debit payable. I mean, we need to eliminate payable with 1,500 and credit receivable with 1,500. We in 1500, we need to deduct from receivable. 1500, we need to deduct from payables. The remaining 2500 cash in a transit. That was recorded as receivable in parent company, mean consolidation. If there is any cash in transit, we will record accounting entry debit cash with how much? 
and credit receivable mean receivable we will eliminate. In this 2500 will be added to cash. Mm -hmm. And this 2500 will be eliminated from receivable. In total receivable will be eliminated by 4000. But payable was the remaining 1500 because 2500 they paid. So payable will be reduced by 15. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? In without any cash in transit, there was 4,000 receivable and payable. As they paid 2,500, but check is not arrived yet. So for any cash in transit, we record accounting entry cash debit receivable credit. Because while they paid, they eliminated payable from their book. Mm -hmm. So we need to adjust both of these with payable, receivables, and cash. This is for cash in transit. Cash we need to record where who is receiving cash, parent company, and they will eliminate their receivable with the remaining 2500 through this. Because parent company is having a receivable of 4,000, while subsidiary is having payable of 1,500 because 2,500 they paid. So from their book, 1,500 will be eliminated payable. But from parent receivers, 4,000 will be eliminated. Remaining 2,500, they received cash. Ultimately, they paid cash, they recorded credit cash. Now they will record debit cash. Ultimate effect will be nil. In cash, the ultimate effect will be nil. So, intergroup transaction we need to eliminate. So, if move here. Receivable, we need to add this. We need to deduct 2500. We need to deduct 1500. Now, give me the amount. Uh, 30,000. 30, Cash 2000, we need to add 2500. So that will be 45. So now we can calculate their total. Two four eight five hundred plus two thousand two fifty two five zero five hundred plus twenty one two fifty. Uh, please use calculator. Three four one six fifty. Three four one six five zero. Okay, share capital. We eliminate subsidiary. We record only parent company. Retained earning. We have calculated through working. Four. Mm -hmm. How much is that? One eight five. One eight five eight nine zero. So one eight five eight nine zero. We have calculated non-controlling interest from working for. So that is five one two six zero. Five one two six zero. And uh, this should be eliminated, mean nil. And current liabilities. In this, we need to eliminate that 1500 payable relating to intergroup transactions. Is that how much is the figure for payables? Oh, sorry, current liabilities.
33 plus 23 minus 1500. Now please see if this is also coming 341650. Yes. So in this question, there was media acquisition. In this question, there was a problem in calculating the net assets at acquisition date. In this question, there was impairment as well. In this question, non-controlling interest based on fair value method as well. There is intergroup transactions on realized profit. Mm -hmm. There is intergroup transfer of asset on realized profit. Mm -hmm. What else was there? One thing they left only cash consideration contingent and share option. They can make it more complex by including that information. But there was new point regarding investment. Normally we eliminate investment. But here. In this question, they are saying no. You need to check the investment. Mm -hmm. If there is other that you need to report. Don't eliminate investment blindly. Because normally this investment we consider is cash consideration. But in this question, cash consideration was given separately. Mm -hmm. So good question. So how much time would you have to take in this game? Yeah. Maximum 30 minutes. Maximum 30 minutes? Yes. Um, we covered in one hour. But we discussed everything. I explained you some topics as well. Not one hour before one hour. During that one hour, we discussed some topics from the book as well. We devised previous everything. And while going to exam, we are having enough practice. So if you solve this question now at home, it will take about 45 minutes maximum. Mm -hmm. But during exam, it will take. Mm -hmm. If you are moving without practice to exam, it will take 45, 50 minutes over there. Yeah. So shall we move forward? We are having some good MCQs from BPP teacher. Good luck, everybody, with the 94. Mm On what basis may our subsidiary be excluded from consolidation in accordance with IFRS 10 consolidated financial statements? Mm. The activities of the subsidiary are dissimilar to the activities of the rest of the group. The subsidiary was acquired with the intention of reselling it after a short period of time. The subsidiary is based in a country with strict exchange control, which make it difficult for it to transfer funds to the parents. There is no basis on which our subsidiary may be excluded from consolidation. Is there any basis on which uh, our subsidiary may be excluded from consolidation? What was basis? And, uh... The intention of reselling. Mm -hmm. uh, subsidiary assets are immaterial. 
सब्सिडी वैल्यूज आ रही है मटीरियल और पेमेंट इन द सब्सिडी पेमेंट इन द लॉन्ग्स 95 टाइप इज When a bargain purchase arises, mean negative goodwill. I have heard that business communication required that the amount involved in calculating the bargain purchase mean negative goodwill should first be reassessed. When the amount of the bargain purchase has been confirmed, mean there is negative goodwill. How should it be accounted for? Charged as an expense in profit and loss account? No. Should be charged to retain earnings. Capitalized and presented under non-credit assets, no positive goodwill capitalized. Credit to profit or loss shown as deduction from non-credit assets. Credit to profit and loss. Profit and loss mean retained earning. Mean add to retained earning. Gain. Ninety-six, please. Associate. If your holding is above fifty percent, that is subsidiary. If your holding is below fifty but above twenty, as well as you are having significant influence on the investing company. Mm -hmm. Significant influence means you are involved in the decision making of investing company. Then you will record as associate. If you are not involved in decision making, just having holding about twenty percent, that will not be associated. Say, okay. main thing is significant influence. So option C. I haven't even read what is the options. You are saying C. Okay, C. Ninety-seven, please. Which two of the following statements are correct when preparing consolidated financial statements? A subsidiary cannot be consolidated unless it prepares financial statements to the same reporting date as the parent. No, we no year end could be different. A subsidiary with a different reporting date may prepare additional st uh, statements up to the group reporting date for consolidation purpose. Yes, if there is different and gap period is two to three months, they need to prepare some additional. Mm -hmm. A subsidiary financial statements can be included in consolidation if the gap between the parent and subsidiary reporting dates is a five months or less. No, three months or less. So D, where our subsidiary financial statements are drawn up to a different reporting date from those of the parents, adjustment should be made for significant transaction or events occurring between the two reporting dates. Yes, because A and C is not right. Ninety-eight, please.
identify whether the following factors are relevant or not relevant. Mm -hmm. Consideration when arriving at the fair value of a non-financial asset according to IFRS 13. Mm -hmm. The characteristics of the asset. I mean, what type of asset is that? Whether it is used for main business or less operated business. So, this is a relevant factor while calculating fair value. The price paid to acquire the asset? No. Non financial asset? Just like uh, property plant equipment? Non current assets. Non -current assets. The price paid to acquire the asset, that is not relevant factor. The principal or most advantageous market for the asset, in how much advantage that asset provides, it is a factor for calculating fair value. The highest and best use of the asset, obviously if asset is used for providing more benefit, so that will be considered as a factor. It is based on the investment and the higher value in euros. No, 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 no. Mean whether fair value of asset is more than book value or not. Fair value means market value. This depends upon characteristics of the asset, mean type of asset, advantages of the asset, and the use of the asset, yeah. not the price. 99. Chapter is from. It is from. I think there was some information in chapter 17 about fair value. An investor company assess control to determine whether or not it is the parent of an investee company mean if they are having control, they are parent. According to IFRS 10, which three of the following are required to determine whether an investor has control of an investee? The ability to use its power over the investee to affect the amount of the investor's return? Yes. Mm -hmm. Exposure to a right to variable return from its involvement with the investee? Yes. Acquisition of 50% or more? No. Uh -huh. Above 50%. Power of the investee? Yes. Power over the university mean you can influence them. Mm. 100.
Actually, company owns 100% of the share capital of the following companies. The directors are unsure of whether the investment should be consolidated. In which of the following circumstances would the investment not be consolidated? Yeah. Petri company has decided to sell its investment in Alpha company as it is a loss making. The directors believe its exclusion from consolidation would assist users in predicting the group's future profits. No, this is not the valid reason. Beta company is a bank and its activity is so different from engineering activities of the rest of the group that it would be meaningless to consolidate it. No, this is not the reason that their operations are different. Delta company is located in a country where uh, local accounting standards are compulsory and these are not compatible with IFRS standard used by the rest of the group. No, in this case, you cannot exclude. Separate you need to provide disclosure. What are the differences? Gamma company is located in a country where a military cop have taken place and Patre company has lost control. If there is no control, that is not your subsidiary. Now moving towards some difficult short questions. By covering these, consolidation balance sheet part is completed. 253, good luck everybody. You need to perform calculation. You need to find the figure. Yes. So you need to calculate. What you need to calculate, you need to calculate. At 31st March, at what amount should the non controlling interest appear in the consolidated statement of financial position? The non controlling interest figure we need to calculate. 
which company acquired 70% of the 200,000 equity share of Wizard Company? It's only subsidiary on 1st April 20X8, year end 31st March 20X9, mean for computing. When the retained earning of a Wizard Company, mean subsidiary, were 450. The carrying amount of Wizard Company's net assets at the date of acquisition were equal to their fair values. Which company measures non-controlling interest at fair value? Based on share price. The market value of Wizard Company share at the date of acquisition was 1.75. I mean, in this question, the non-controlling interest fair value is not given. We need to calculate. How we can calculate? 175 is the share price. We need to multiply this with shares. How many? 200,000. How much is the percentage of non-controlling interest? What is the value? 105,000. Is that? Okay. So at 31st March 20X9, when at year end, retained earning of subsidiary was 750. What was at the start? Wow. 450. Yeah. How much is the difference? 300,000. 300, Out of that 300,000, what is the percentage of non-controlling interest? 30% subsidiary share. Yeah. So normally we calculate fair value of a non-controlling interest that we have calculated 105,000 and a subsidiary profit share that we can calculate 300,000 multiplied by 30%. That is what? 90,000. So all together 195,000. Take a break. After break, we will cover remaining. Okay. 